Hello everyone. This is a video solution for the uh, isometric classwork problem one. Um, so that was the block with the pole um, sort of in the front and then some uh, vertical features as well. So first we're going to go over how to set up um, AutoCAD to do isometric sketching. So the easiest way to do this is to go to your grid settings by right clicking. Um, this will bring up your drafting settings window. You want to make sure to select 2D model space and isometric snap in your grid. So that's going to change it to this nice um, sort of hexagonal dot pattern rather than the typical orthogonal grid we're used to seeing. All right, so then the next step is to change our snap grid to something a little more convenient. So by default it's 0.5, but the dimensions of these parts are rather larger. So I'm going to choose something like 5. Um, and then the same for the grid spacing. Type the grid command, change that to 5 as well. So now we can see that the grid has gone a little wider. And if we zoom out, um, each one of these dots will now represent um, a unit of 5 in this case inches. So at this point, we're ready to follow the isometric drawing procedure. So I'm just going to enter line command. Um, and I can start drawing the outline. And this particular part has an outline of 70 by 40. So I'm just going to extend the mouse along my uh, effective x-axis here, 70. Um, and then towards the perpendicular axis, 40. Um, so I'm going to now come up the thickness of the part, which is 20. And then I'll come back in and fill out the remainder of this bottom part. Um, so Looking at the drawing, you'll see that there's an angled feature that ends about here. Um, and that is at the 30 unit mark, which is 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. So I can stop that line here just before the angled feature. So I'm going to continue drawing the back side here. I'm going to come up. Um, this is a total of 40 units tall. It projects forward 10. And then at this point, I'm just going to fill in the top of the part. So that's 30 units over. And then uh, this feature, remember, projects a total of 30 units out. So I can trace the outline like so. So now I have that top shape. I'm going to just zoom out a little so you can see it here. Um, so if you ever, if your zoom doesn't cooperate like this, where it's, see it says zoomed out as far as possible, one thing to try is just hit Regen, um, and that will take into account your new drawing and expand your model limits so that you can zoom. So now I can kind of freely zoom to the whole thing. Um, so anyway, I'm going to keep drawing these lines here. So now I'm going to fill in the vertical lines at the outline, um, and you can see I went ever so slightly overboard there. So I'm just going <laughs> to just going to draw that correctly. Um, and so you can see what's actually happening here is I've got, I'm trying to draw to this point, but it O-snaps me to the bottom. So there's a couple of fixes here. I could manually drag this to the place I want, but again, I've got that same issue. So you'll notice um, object snap is turned on and off with F3. So if I disable that now, then it'll neatly line up um, as I want. I can also manually stretch lines out here and do a, a neat little fix. Yet another way, let's say I had drawn this much longer, um, I can use the trimming tool. So I can click up here or as I prefer just type the trim command. Trim command. Um, and what you do is you first select the uh, you first select the cutting edges, hit enter, and then you select the items to be trimmed. You can see there it just trims off the excess um, without having to do any any uh, subtle realignments. So now I'm just going to continue drawing these features here. And now I can sort of see the part is starting to take shape. And what I'm doing, you'll notice I'm not drawing back over any of these lines. Um, I want all of these lines to only have one object. So you may not be able to see the difference, but when you go to trim a line, um, 
you may have, if there's three or four lines stacked up in one place, then it may not behave the way you expect. So just keep that in mind. And now um, I'm going to draw that angled face. Again, this is just a simple matter of connecting the dots. So here, this is a good use of my trim tool. Since I'm not trimming to a particular grid location necessarily, um, now I want to make sure that I'm trimming this object right up to that line. And there we go. So this is the, the basis of that first, uh, of the outside shape. Um, and now I need to add an iso circle, which is that projected elliptical circle to represent the hole in the middle. So um, the way to do that, there's, there's two steps you need to remember. The first is you want to run the isoplane command, and that'll tell you um, which of the three isometric planes you're going to sketch these holes on. So now it assumes I want to sketch on the top, and you can see that's represented by the shape of the cursor. So then I can type the ellipse command, um, and my first option is, and here we can see I can do an arc, center, or iso circle. I want to specify an iso circle um, at a center that is 20 units in from each edge. Um, and then my radius, going off my drawing, is going to be 10 units. And then we have this nice isocircle aligned with the top. So um, we can do the same thing for uh, the remaining arcs in the figure. Um, we can do it out of the lazy way, which is just basically repeat that same procedure. Um, except now we know that um, for those other arcs with radius of 10, we just have to start at a different point. So this, this might get a little bit sloppy, but it's it's um, relatively quick. Down again. Um, and this is where your trim tool can come in handy, where I can now select my outside edges as cutting edges. I can also actually select all these as cutting edges, because we're going to be doing a whole bunch of cutting in here. So now I hit Enter, and I'm going to start trimming out these objects. Um, I can basically trim away anything of all those that I don't want. Similarly, I probably don't need that edge either. Alright, so that's our top surface. We're going to repeat that same procedure for the bottom, which is going to be ellipse. We want isocircle. Um, we're going to go in 10 units, specify a radius of 10, do the same thing, isocircle. Um, and we can see basically we're going to project downwards. We want to be here. And then radius is good. Okay. A little bit of trimming to clean this up. Same technique, we select all the objects as potential cutting edges. And then we can do all this trimming at once. Same deal here. We're going to select this this. Um, here I'm going to leave a little bit, actually I'm noticing this this object should actually be over one. Seems like it should be projected straight down to here. You can see this actually I had it drawn one unit over. And now what we want is a line that is tangent to these guys. So you'll notice that it doesn't quite line up because the tangent won't lie on these grid points. So to do this properly, we need to disable our grid snap and then enable in the um, right click mode of the O snap option. We need to make sure to turn on the tangent snap option. You can see most of these choices are turned off by default, but we can control a lot of different behavior this way. So I'm gonna make sure my tangent is enabled and I'm going to turn O snap on. I'm going to just draw with my line. And you can see that now just bringing the mouse close enough to the arc will snap me to where I want to be. So I draw two tangent lines, and that's it. And then I can continue at this point with my trim command as before. I'm going to select the appropriate cutting edges. Um, and I can even be lazy about what I choose at this point. And then it'll know when I want to trim away that inside. It'll just delete it directly. And there you have it.